What's going on guys, John Elder here from Conemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to generate text files on the fly with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to generate text files on the fly for our My Club app with Django. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee is just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, text files. Why would we want to possibly generate text files on the fly with Django? Well, in our example here, we've got our club app, and maybe we want to generate a list of the venues, a text file here that people can download and print out or whatever. Uh, there are just tons of reasons why you might want to generate text files on the fly. And if you understand how to do this, you can start to understand how to generate other types of things like CSV files and uh, PDF files and things like that. And we'll probably get into that stuff a little bit later because it's kind of interesting. In this video, we're just going to start with text files. And you can see I've generated this text file that lists all of our venues. And you know, we can come up here and I've created a little link here. We click on it. It says, hey, do you want to open it with Notepad? Do you want to save it? You can do either one. Boom. There it is. So this is actually really easy and kind of cool. This is going to be a fun one. So let's jump right in. So let's head over to our code here. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to all the other videos in this Django playlist. So let's head over here to our views.py. So Usually when we do something with Django, it's always a three-step process. We create a view, we create a URL, and then we create an actual HTML page. In this case, we only have to do two of those things. We have to create a URL and a view. We don't actually have to create a web page because we're not generating a web page. This is a text file, and we're actually going to create this text file in the view itself on the fly. So anytime somebody clicks on a link, that will get generated automatically. Why? Well, we could have it static, right? We could just upload a text file and have people download it using the static system in Django that we always do. But we want this to be dynamic. As our venues change, we want to add those venues to the text file automatically. We don't want to have to update it and re-upload a text file every time. So this is really cool. You can dynamically add anything you want into the text file and then have it you know, downloadable or printable or openable or whatever you want for the people on your website. So very cool. And uh, actually, really easy. So let's start out. What we need to do here is, anytime you go to a web page, you're you're seeing a response, and you, we see this. You know, you send a request, and then you get a response. That's how web browsers work. And up until now, the response has been an HTML file. But you can have other types of sort of MIME types for responses: text files, PDFs, CSVs, anything you want. So to use this, we need to import a little thing here. So let's go from Django.http, we want to import HTTP response because we're going to create a different type of response. So here, let's uh, generate text file venue list. So actually, let's start out with the URL. Let's come over here and create a new URL. So let's go path and let's call this uh, venue underscore text. And this is going to be views dot venue underscore text. And let's give this a name of venue underscore text. Slap our comma in there. So okay, we've got our URL. So now we need to create a view for this thing. So let's go ahead and save this head back over here. And let's define venue text like we always do. We also want to pass in the request as we always do. So we need to define a new response. So this response is going to be HTTP response. And the content underscore type is going to equal text slash plain. So we're saying, hey, instead of returning an HTML web page, we want to return text, right? A text file. So OK, that's pretty easy. Now let's go response. And we need to sort of set this up. This is going to be content dash disposition, D-I-S-P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N, disposition. And we want to set that equal to attachment because think of this as a text file attachment that people are going to download, right? So it's going to be an attachment. And let's give it a file name. So file name equals, and let's call this venues.txt. So this is going to be the name of the file they download, venues.txt. Name it anything you want, but 
this is going to be a list of the venues. So you can say venues.txt or venue list.txt or anything you want. And that looks good. Okay. So before we get into the actual database stuff, let me just show you how to do any sort of text file that you want. So let's just sort of manually put some stuff in a text file. So let's create a variable called lines. And this is going to be a Python dictionary. So I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna type in some stuff. This is line one. And then the, the backslash in that stands for new line, right? So, uh, so this is line two, new line, comma, this is line three, new line. All right, so we could just do it like this. Now, in order to write these to a text file, let's say write to text file, we just go response dot write lines and then pass in those lines. So these are the lines we want to pass into that file. And then we just return our response. All right? So in the past, we've returned redirect. We have returned an HTT response redirect. We have returned a render for a page. Now we're just returning this response, which we've defined right here. All right, so that's really all there is to it. So let's head over to our nav bar and create a link for this that people can click on in the nav bar. So let's go to templates, events, and nav bar. And let's just sort of scroll down here, find the last thing, which is, I guess, venues. I'm just going to copy this guy and add another one. So let's say venue text file or something. And then head over to our URL. And remember, we called this venue underscore text. So I could just copy that. And in the name of the link, just put it like that. Okay, so that should work. So let's head back over to the website, hit reload. And we see we have this venue text file link up here. When I click on it, it gives us a little opportunity to open it or save it. We can toggle back and forth. I just want to save it. When we do, we open it. It says this is line one, this is line two, this is line three. And that's very cool. If we want to change this at any time, we could just come up here to our views.py. Maybe we want to add another one on here. Let me put two lines here to break it apart. Uh, John Elder is awesome. <laughs> I'm really not. All right. So save this, head back over here, hit reload, open this guy again. Now it says John Elder is awesome. This is line one, two, and three. So that's how you generate text files. Very, very simple. So, okay, that's cool. But what if we want to generate a list of all the venues and we want it to be dynamic. So if we add a new venue, it adds a new line in the text file whenever somebody clicks on this thing. How do we do that? Well, pretty simple. Remember up here somewhere in our views.py file right here, we imported our model. So we can access everything in the model by accessing this venue model. So let's come up here and let's uh, uh, designate the model. And I'm just going to sort of comment out this stuff. We don't want to do that anymore. So let's create a variable called the uh, venues and let's just set the equal to venue dot objects dot all. And this will just pull everything out of the venue model. And what is that? Well, we can head over to our models.py file and here's our venue model. And you remember it has a name and address, zip code, phone, web, and email address. So we can access any of those. This will return all of them. So now we just want to loop through, loop through and output. So let's go for venue in venues. And we could probably do this several different ways, but let's create that lines dictionary again. And let's make it blank. Let's say uh, create blank. I, I was doing this yesterday too. This is a list, <laughs> blank list, not a dictionary. Man, my brain. Whew. All right, so let's just append. Let's go lines.append. And inside of here, we just want to append venue. And let's put this in an F string and do it like this. So venue, and then we can put a new line. So, okay, that should do all of that. Then again, we're going to, when we're finished doing that, we're going to write that to the thing and then return the response. So let's just see what this does. So let's head back over here, hit reload, do this again, open it. This will just give the names. So city park, area 51. Las Vegas High School Gym and Downtown Vegas Nightclub, which are these things, right? So that just gives the names. And that's fun if you just want that. But we can really drill down 
and, and do anything we want. Like I said, we can access all of these things just by dot whatevering them. And by that, I mean, we could go venue dot name, right? So if we want that, and then we could go venue dot, and then what do we have to do? We've got address, zip code, phone. So let's do that. Address, new line, and then venue dot phone. And let's do a new line. So address phone, address, oh, zip code phone. We forgot zip code. <laughs> All right, so let's do zip underscore score code and then venue dot phone, new line. And then what else do we got? Uh, web and email address. So venue dot web, new line, and venue dot email underscore address. And let's put several new lines between each one. So, okay, let's go ahead and save that. Head back over here, see what that looks like. Hit reload, boom, boom. Open this file. And now we have city park, address, zip code, phone number, web address, and email address, Area 41, Las Vegas High School gym, and all the information. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Really cool, really easy, really fast way to on the fly do this. And you'll notice there's one, two, three, four of these things. Well, what happens if we come over here and add a new venue? And let's just call this fifth venue, uh, 123 Fifth Street, and that's in 55555. The phone number is 555-555-5555. The web address is https 5555.com, I don't know. And then mail at 55.com. So if we submit this guy, Boom, your venue is submitted. Now we go to the venues thing. We see there's the fifth venue right there. It's it's on there. Now if we come over here to the text file and open it and look at it, let's see. Sure enough, there's our fifth venue. It's been added to the text file on the fly, dynamically. We didn't have to update anything. We didn't have to change anything. It just worked. And that's really, really cool. So that's how to do text files. Like I said, you could do anything. You could do PDF files. You could do CSV files, you know, Excel files, stuff like that anything you can think of. And each of those things, you do it a little bit differently than this, obviously, but the sort of fundamental idea of it is the same. And if you guys are interested, we'll look at other things like the PDF files and the Excel files and stuff like that. Let me know in the comment section below, but uh, very cool and uh, kind of fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Viewing over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.